Once people have enough clusters that they want to benefit from a cost and economics perspective, then hosting dropping becomes the viable option. years of Kubernetes, there's some been some significant architectural changes that have happened over the time. And one of the more recent interesting ones is a project that you know, you're uh, intimately involved with about Hypershift. Can you tell us a little bit about you know, that project and the importance of it? Kube uh, has been around for quite some time. Uh, there has been Kube ADM and multiple ways to deploy Kubernetes. But along the line, the idea of multi-cluster started to emerge. Uh, where one cluster is not no longer enough for many of the use cases, whether you know uh, it's it's uh, uh, tenancy, multi-tenancy, or whether it's cost savings, or whether it's regulatory reason. There's a lot of reasons why people go multi-cluster today, and we needed to think hard. Uh, what can we do uh, to to bring that multi-cluster as cheap as possible and as fast as possible to our consumers? And if you look at the big cloud providers, if they're offering a service, and we're offering also Hypership, by the way, on top of those cloud providers, uh, they are not exposing control panes. One of the major costs for, uh, for Kubernetes and OpenShift is the control pane overhead. And so this is where Hypership came in. So OpenShift has been around for quite some time. We have decided to say, you know what? We're gonna reuse existing architectures. It's not, we're not inventing the wheel here. We're bringing Hypershift, which allows decoupling and separation of concerns uh, from you know, IKS, what IBM has been doing for quite some time, from the Rooks toolkit, how we deployed uh, Kubernetes and IBM and also on the cloud providers to our OpenShift customers. And that is the birth of hosted control panes and Hypershift. Adel, so when we look at the, the constituents that leverage hosted control planes, we have our managed service uh, in the public cloud uh, on AWS, uh, where RSREs run it, versus a customer might be managing their own uh, environment. Can you give us a little compare contrast as to how that works and the implications for, for customers in both of those environments? 100%. So when, when a customer would run, uh, we call it standalone, standalone OpenShift. In standalone mode, we, as Red Hat running on, let's say, Red Hat OpenShift on AWS, we still support the customer. There is a shared responsibility matrix. Uh, it's, 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 you know, they, they, when they need help, we're going to give them the help. However, there has been a tiny problem. Uh, they don't want us to peek into their control, into their workloads, and we want to take care of the control pane for them, and we maintaining high availability for them. So, how can we? take that full responsibility of managing the control pane at the same time, uh, be able to give an SLA and an SLO that is reliable enough that it was within our control. And this is the difference. So one of the main uh, differences, we shifted left, the entire control pane we, we set. It's already Red Hat's responsibility to maintain and control the control pane. Uh, we're gonna shift it architecturally speaking and have it be hosted in Red Hat infrastructure or by Red Hat SRE. So now we're deciding the logging stack, the monitoring stack, uh, and this is to give more reliability to the service. As we're doing that, we're able to also uh, make use of, make architectural decision to reduce the cost for the customer, because at the, at the end of the day, the customer had to pay for infrastructure or compute to host the control pane. Now they don't. We take care of that as well. So that has been shifted left. So we have the SRE, we have Red Hat, taking care of the control pane, including the infrastructure to run the control pane, and the customer absolutely focusing on workloads and running applications that they care about. All right, so uh, we talked a little bit about the cost. Uh, it's also faster for, uh, for, for a new cluster to be spun up, my, my understanding. Uh, sounds like there's a lot of advantages. Um, is there any reason why a customer might choose to stay with kind of the classic mode uh, versus uh, using hosted control plane uh, for, for certain architectures? Right, so uh, there is, at the moment, we're trying to catch up from a compliance perspective, but uh, at the end of the day, when we're running a managed service, it's multi-cluster by default. So hypershift makes a lot of sense when you have multi-cluster. If you have one or two or three clusters, which is like maybe that happens on self-managed, people run very large clusters or even on managed, but in, in, a, in a managed offering, there's a lot of clusters in place, and so it makes sense uh, to, to shift left the control pane and, and do it this way. So roadmap is eventually we're going to have 
Rosa with hosted control pane, or in the future, Aro with hosted control pane be the default provisioning option for managed offerings for all the benefits that I just mentioned. And Classic will stay around. And as we catch up with the compliance story, then uh, we're going to be in parity and we're going to be in a good place to say, you know, this is your default now. It's the recommended option. This is what you should be doing and how you can help yourself and help us uh, keep your service up and running.